Hey friends, so in this video I'm gonna show you 10 CLI tools that I discovered recently. Most of them are actually written in Rust. So with that, let's get started. The first tool we're gonna look at is called Yazi. It's basically a terminal file manager written in Rust. It's really fast and customizable. If you click on the showcase here, once you visit this website, you see that you can preview files, you can batch rename, and then you can navigate it using the emotions. You can search, you can find, you can do a lot of things. So if we open up our terminal, I already installed it by the way, and you type in Yazi. Here you see that to the left, we have our kind of file tree and you can see all the directories. Uh, I'm inside of the config directory here. In the middle, you see the list of all the files inside of the directory and to the right, you have a preview of those files. So for example, here's the theme.tml. You see all the contents on the right. Now, if we visit, for example, some images and open up Yazi again, you see we have also an image previewer. And so, yeah, this is kind of similar to Ranger, if you're familiar with that. It does the same thing, but this one is written in Rust, and supposedly it's really fast. The next tool is called Btop, and this one is similar to Htop. You can essentially use it to see your resources on your machine. So if you visit this repository here and you scroll down, maybe to the screenshots here, you see all the different things it provides and it's very customizable. And let me demo it for you. So if you open up Btop, here you see um, our kind of different processes running here. And then we have a disk, memory, and network. And up here, if you click on menu, options, as you can see, I can actually use the mouse. You can change the theme to whatever you like. You can also activate Vim keys, and you can do a lot of different things here. So it's definitely something worth considering if you like a more visual representation of your processes. Again, like HTOP looks like this. It's definitely usable, but the other one seems to be a bit more polished. The next tool we're gonna look at is called Atwin. And this is a tool that will help you synchronize, search, or even back up your shell history. So if you look at this screenshot here, you see that it has an interface similar to FZF, and you can search all the different commands you ran and just Run them. One cool thing about this is that you can install it on a server and then you can synchronize the history between different machines. Uh, I can see myself using this between different like dev servers, development servers, and then have the same commands available on all machines. If I open up my terminal and press Ctrl R, you see all the different commands I ran. And if you search, for example, for Vim, here you see the different ones I ran. And if you press Enter, it kind of paste the command here for you. So pretty handy. If you go to the documentations, there's a couple of things you need to do. Obviously you can run this command here to install it. Then you can import your existing history. It can figure it out by itself if you use auto or if you have a bash, for example, or Z shell in my case, I can just run this command here. If you are using a server to synchronize history between machines, you're gonna have to register it and then continue from there. So if you go to self-hosting, Docker, this is, for example, a very easy way for you to run it on a server and then synchronize between different machines. Next, we have a tool called HTMLQ, which is similar to JQ, but this one is for HTML. And you can use some CSS selector to extract different bits of the HTML. There's different ways you can install it. And here's some examples. If I copy this line here, what this will do is it will pull the HTML from the Rust website and filter it down or only take basically that has this CSS selector. So if I paste this line here, you see that it only copied or pulled the HTML that has an ID of get help. You can also pull all the different links from that page and you can even pipe this to bat and this will give you some syntax highlighting. So yeah, this is a pretty nice tool if you're doing some web scrapping or something like that. Next, we have a tool called JLess, which is a JSON viewer that you can use in your terminal. It has a lot of the Vim inspired commands built in, which is nice. So here's a quick demo. I have this dummy project. Let's look into package log.json, which is usually a very big file. So if I type in JLess package log, here you see we have pretty nice syntax highlighting. You can kind of close things here. You can even search for stuff. For example, I can say node, node modules and it highlights things. And if I press an N, I can scroll through them. There's a lot of interesting things you can do with this tool. So if you go to the user guide, here you see how you can navigate it, how you can move up and down. And you see that we can use J, Q, H, and L, 
similar to Vim. You can even copy stuff using YY like Vim and search similar to Vim as well. It's pretty cool. If you're a Vim user or at least you use Vim Motions, this is going to feel like home for you. Next, we have a tool called XH, and this is a CLI tool that you can use to send HTTP requests from your terminal. It has a lot of the features that HTTP provides, and it's written in Rust, so it's supposed to be pretty fast. There are multiple ways you can install it, as you can see here, and here's a ton of options that comes built in. And then if you scroll down, there's some examples we can use. So in this case, we have this website, and we're supposed to pull some JSON from it. So if I run this command here, you see that we are able to make a request and pull some JSON from it. One interesting way you can use this actually, you can pipe it to JLS, which is the tool we just I just showed you moments ago. And here, for example, you can navigate the different um, responses in a more friendlier way, especially if you have like a big JSON file coming from your request. This would be a very good way to view it and navigate it. Next, we have a tool called Condo and this tool will help you clean up the different dependencies from your different projects. For example, it will help you remove things like node modules, target, build, etc. To install it, you can just run brew install condo, or depending on your machine, you can do other things. And so if I open up my terminal, here you see I have a couple different projects from different languages or using different languages. If I type in condo dot, you see that it starts asking me, like, do you want to remove the target directory from this project? In this case, I'm not going to say N for now. It's going to keep rotating all the, all the different projects that you have. And this is another Rust one, for example. This one is Node. It figured out that you want to remove this Node modules. And you can just keep rotating until you remove all of them. This would be very handy, for example, if you're going to back up your code on maybe some other place. And you want to make sure you remove all these things to empty up or free up some space. And also, this one has a UI. So this is the CLI that I just showed you here. It does the same thing that I just demoed but they also have a UI that you can use to do the same thing, essentially. Pretty nice. Next, we have a tool called Diftastic, and this is essentially a diff tool, a structural diff tool that understands syntax. And here's a good example of that. You see that we only have uh, if true and then this number is changed, and we have a new kind of value here. It shows you only the stuff that changed based on the language. So it doesn't show you that there's a new full line change. It only shows you that we added this code here and this variable here, or this value. To test this out, I already installed on my machine, and I have this um, simple project. I have this file called old, and then another one called new. And those two files are essentially identical. So what we're going to do is in this new.ts, I'm going to rename is enrolled to enrolled, and then save them. So essentially nothing changed other than the variable rename. And I'm going to type diff t and then old.ts and then new.ts. And here you see um, this example where it shows you that the only thing that changed is this variable changed. And it knows already that this is a TypeScript file. Next, we have a tool called RNR, which is a command line tool that can be used to do batch renaming or just renaming things and it has a lot of features and they show us a demo here of how this works so after you install it you can do something like this line here essentially you have this um, kind of file tree you have a bunch of files file 0 1 2 3 and then a directory called one and then we have another three files if we say rnr dash f which is force we want to basically rename the word file to renamed on all of these um files or specifically these three files so the first one should be renamed and these two so if you run this command what happens is um, this would be the result so the first one will be renamed and then inside of the directory those two will be renamed you can also change like include directories like actually the directory itself can be renamed and there's a lot of interesting things you can do here recursive renaming so change everything within a directory for example yeah there's a lot of interesting things here and finally the last tool would be this one which is called mprox and basically this tool will help you run multiple commands in parallel so it looks like that so you can run your vim servers webpack etc all will be running at the same time and you can manage them run them or stop them whenever you want these are all the tools i wanted to show you in this video i hope you found this helpful i obviously did not cover all the details of these tools and i really encourage you to just read all their docs and try them out and see all the features they provide if I want to recover all the details, this video will be like two hours. So hopefully this is going to give you an idea of what, what you can use and how you can use them. 
So yeah, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.